building dinosaur parks was nothing new for the scientists of the Kanoa Foundation. They had already built several parks around the world, including now one in Canada. But some of the money spenders felt that the parks were too limited, that they needed to expand and become more varied, more vibrant, with bigger and better entertainment. And thus, the company went on to their next and biggest challenge yet, to make a new prehistoric park in the heart of Spain. With not only dinosaurs to behold, but prehistoric mammals as well. The food, accommodation and merchandise would be better than ever and eco-friendly. As with the other parks, the site would be first reserved and a giant spot of land would be the base of operations. An entrance and welcome hall was built near the Spanish coast with a ticket booth at the end. Guests who arrived and were greeted by the soft and warm Spanish climate would first lay eyes upon a very pretty and imposing statue of a T-Rex. This park would be easier to access than previous Jurassic parks and the intent was to make a zoo that was accessible to everyone, no matter how much money they made. The first foundations and roads were then laid bare, as through the pattern it could already be seen where the first dinosaur exhibition would be on display. As with previous parks, the entrance would feel like a boulevard, with gift shops and quick snacks for some last minute gift shopping or having a refreshing drink after the long journey to get there. The first guest facility was a giant gift shop promptly named the Giganto Gift Shop. It would always be cluttered here once the guests arrived since everyone wanted at least one souvenir to remember their awesome time at the prehistoric park. You could buy pretty much anything here, from replicas of fossils to much cuter merch like plushies, including a triceratops stuffed animal which of course was the favorite dinosaur of the head manager. But things like this were also sold in previous parks. The money spenders wanted to expand and offer more varied goods. And that included toys and clothing as well. So despite the park already having plans to create an apparel shop elsewhere, you could also buy some cool t-shirts here and some very unique looking dinosaur masks for the little ones. Then it was finally time to add some food to the roster to fill the hungry bellies of the guests and the first kiosk that was built was a Bronto Burger one. This offered the best burgers on the Spanish coast, though the photos of the burgers might leave a bit to be desired. At least the marketing wasn't as fake as with the other companies. Now the burgers on the menu were pretty pricey, but they also had much cheaper ones at the ready which you could just grab and eat on the go for a quick buck. But the real highlight was the kiosk that was built at the opposite side. The marketing team really wanted to pull the strings this time and have much more memorable shops and entertainment and thus proper branding and memorable brands needed to be created as well. And thus, the T-Rex Cafe was made. And the T is obviously spelled T-E-A as in the beverage. Brilliant! And the logo of the T-Rex enjoying his tea was very cute to boot. They could certainly capitalize on that by making buttons, keychains or shirts with that cute logo. They had everything on the menu, from simple lattes to matcha creams or bubble tea. With more buildings being added, there was something to enjoy for everyone, and those who would enjoy a burger, tea or pizza slice could already get a glimpse of the first dinosaurs while sitting and having a meal. With a new scientist team at the steering wheel, many new and unseen dinosaurs could be excavated and created. But it also meant that this park, for now, would have on average less animals on display compared with the previous Jurassic Parks since it was all a work in progress. Therefore, it was vital that besides just the dinosaurs, the guests needed to be amused and amazed by the attractions and restaurants as well. The first dinosaur zone was made ready by having its vegetation planted its drinking spots being dug out, and finally having its feeders be placed all over. Previously, the dinosaurs would only eat leaves from certain bushes and plants, but this time they wanted to up the ante for the dinosaurs too. 
these dinosaurs would be living the luxurious life, and so they would make sure to give them plenty of veggies, plants and fruits. The dinosaurs would be brought over at the animal nursery, where data was also collected on the various species that were on display in the park. For the first dinosaur, it was always important to start off a bit humble and small, since there needed to be build-up. But the park also wanted their younger guests not to be scared immediately once they were out of the gate. For the first dinosaur, the Protoceratops was chosen, and was a perfect specimen since its calm demeanor made it a perfect dinosaur to watch or have in the background while enjoying a snack at the boulevard. Various patterns and colors were available to purchase by the park, and the variety within them was greater than ever. It seemed like this scientist team was way more competent than some of the previous ones who worked in the other parks. Two different patterns were requested, and to abide by the Jurassic Park logic, all of them were female. Now as always, these dinosaurs would of course need to be named, and we at the park would greatly appreciate it if you, the viewers, would come up with names for these dinosaurs and let it know in the comments down below. So please come up with a cool or cute name for these magnificent Protoceratops. The Protoceratops enjoyed a meal of both veggies but also insects. This park had the ability to build termite mounts in the dinosaur exhibits, which actually had multiple functions. Besides offering a more varied diet for the dinosaurs, it also gave them something to be occupied with. Boredom can also have a great and negative effect on animals, and by having the termites not being that easily accessible, the protoceratops needed to work and put in some effort to get to that delicious meal. And that work and effort meant that they would be focused and occupied and not bored, so that only had positive effects. The dinosaurs were very calm, and since the fencing this time was glass, everyone could enjoy the dinosaurs better than ever. There were no annoying bars or wires obscuring views. Honestly, in many ways this park offered way more variety and was better than the previous parks on what was possible. The first of the guests had also arrived since many of the Europeans were not able to witness the previous parks due to the long travel distance or high traveling costs. Many could now just take the car and then the ferry to get here. It was ideal. The next dino zone had already been built as well and would yet again hold a very peaceful and quaint little dinosaur. They really did not want any too aggressive species to ruin everyone's appetite in the beginning. For this zone, the Dryosaurus would be added. This dinosaur had been on display in the previous parks as well, but this time they came in completely new variants, including a feathered one. But for now, the green and brown pattern Dryosaurus would be added and a total of six would enjoy their new home. They were incredibly small and enjoyed long open fields where they could run or socialize. Since they were so small, chances were there for them to get lost in the vegetation, but yet again, due to the glass fencing, they were always visible for guests who passed by. They had the Protoceratops on one side and the Dryosaurus on the other. A beautiful welcoming gift to those who wanted to lay their eyes on some dinosaurs for the first time in their lives. With having more and more dinosaurs added to the park, more guests would be allowed as well. Truth be told that currently not too much was going on when it came to amusement and activity, but that was all a matter of time. The guests that visited the place had an awesome experience of admiring these beautiful creatures that were lost in time. Though of course you also had your more impatient ones that wanted to see a T-Rex or other carnivore as quickly as possible. But that was all in due time. Plans were already being made for the next animal to be added, and so people did not have to wait long for their wish to be fulfilled. And you, the viewers, can help with choosing what the next carnivore will be that will be added. The T-Rex is still off limits for now, but you can choose between the Torvosaurus, the Acrocanthosaurus, or the more unique Smilodon. Let me know in the comments below and see how the park will evolve 
in the next episode.